Hi, you're with Julian on the Brownlow and Israel v. Lebanon, the shame of the West. Not that we haven't had many, but for some reason this is like the crystalline view of our hypocrisy of how support for democracy and human rights and our opposition to warmongering distilled in its cleanest form um there were you know the spurious reasons of justification for the mass murder and genocide of the palestinian population inside gaza all of it fake going back to there being some false equivalence between what's going on between the palestinians and the israeli government but this is attacking a, a sovereign nation that wasn't at war with Israel because they wanted to and getting away with it unilaterally without condemnation, with in fact less condemnation than they've even got over Gaza, blowing up civilians, ground troops in a foreign country and the West has been even more silent than they have been about the year-long mass murder of the Palestinians The, the the silence of the West is shameful, it's disgraceful. There's literally nothing Netanyahu's barbaric, murderous, racist, war criminal government won't get away with. What, what else can they do? At some point they could probably drop a nuclear bomb on Iran and the West would just say that Iran did it. Have you noticed how whenever anyone fights back against Israel, Israel always has a right to defend itself? No one ever says Lebanon has a right to defend itself. No one ever says Palestinians have a right to defend themselves. No one ever says Iran has a right to defend itself. Just Israel. <clears throat> Israel act with the kind of impunity that I don't think we've seen outside of America itself with their wars, which were heavily justified by lies but the justification for bombing Lebanon, have you noticed every time that Israel is attacked, it's Israelis that are attacked. If you attack a Palestinian mother, you see the word Hamas. If you attack anyone in Iran, you see, or Lebanon, you see Hezbollah. Why? Why is um, someone fighting back against the Israeli Defense Force or the Netanyahu government only ever attacking Israelis, but when Israel is murdering civilians in Lebanon or Gaza, they're attacking Hezbollah or Hamas. And why do they always say Iran backed? You don't think America is backing Israel? What does that mean even? And of course, the specter of Ukraine, <coughs> the Western justification for piling Ukraine full of weaponry for the last two years and causing unending war because of their defense of freedom and liberty and the right of Ukraine to self-determination doesn't apply to didn't apply to Gaza doesn't apply to Lebanon who does it apply to is there a list of countries that are allowed to defend themselves seems to be two at the moment And what's all this of, you know, why are we so intent on defending Israel? Because of Second World War guilt? Probably not. Because America didn't used to be this fond of supporting Israel back in the year of JFK when they were wildly opposed to Israel secretly and illegally developing nuclear weapons. This has come through in the modern era. And, you know, this notion, like in Australia, we've got right-wing politicians like opposition leader Peter Dutton saying, you know, we must stand up by our ally. This man is a role goal racist. He stands for people who he supports only. And if you're a brown-skinned Muslim, you can forget about it. But he says, you know, we have to unequivocally stand for our ally. One, why do we unequivocally stand by anyone no matter what they do? And two, why are Israel so our allies? Why is this never questioned? Has Israel sent troops to any war that Australian troops have fought in? Not to my knowledge. <coughs> They're our allies how? The British and Americans 
We've been involved in many wars with them. Our troops have fought alongside each other. Four mainly worse, or better, if you can go back to World War II, but since then, if you're looking at Iran, um, Af Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Vietnam War, then, you know, not for good reasons, but allies, because our troops fought alongside each other. When exactly have Israeli troops fought alongside Australian troops? Why are they our allies? What are they doing to be our ally? And, you know, where are all these... When a Ukraine attack was attacked, every righteous musician on planet Earth was out there bonoing it up for Ukraine. Virtually none have stood up for Gaza or Lebanon. Macklemore, this guy Macklemore, has stood up for what's happening in Gaza. You know, where are all these other stars that came out and were, you know, we're going to support Ukraine against Russian aggression? Where, where is it? They're silent as well. Where are all the athletes? They're silent as well. And I'm not saying all of the athletes. I'm saying our Western ones. And we've seen the impact of criticising the Israeli government, even today when virtually every populace around the world regards them as being in the wrong. The impact it can have on your career just for saying something critical of the Netanyahu government, the world's most dangerous government, with the world's worst human being running it, who's start trying desperately to start World War Three just to remain in power in Israel because he'll get the boot and be up for corruption charges the second the war ends. So he's trying to drag everyone into this conflict by continually trying to provoke Iran. There's no end game to these wars. There's no proposed resolution to these wars. For a long time they said the war in Gaza was about eradicating Hamas, but it's made Hamas stronger, and Netanyahu has a long history of trying to strengthen Hamas to weaken the overall two-state solution. And they're talking about ceasefires with Hamas, suggesting that it's necessary for a ceasefire to deal with Hamas as the main actor from the Palestinian side, which doesn't sound very much like they're close to eradicating them. And the same with Hezbollah. We know that these increase these organisations because they're murdering desperate civilians. So what do you think happens to all of their relatives? They're going to go and join Hamas and Hezbollah to avenge the deaths of their families. So there's no end game. And there's no purported end game that's being offered to the international community other than just random attacks on Lebanon. A, a sovereign nation just randomly bombing it and entering troops in. Completely against international law. D Israel isn't at war with Lebanon. And the West is facilitating the lot by politically whitewashing Israel continually on the world stage, creating false equivalences between Israel and its enemies, despite Israel being the aggressor, and by arming and funding this, you know, racist, tyrannical, blood and guts government of Netanyahu. But the absolute silence of the West on what's happening in Lebanon is a disgrace and a shame of the modern era.